So this is the rock pile set. This is the second time we've done the set. The first time was in November, uh, mid to late November, and we were doing mostly you know, rabbit prey distress, some some pup distress maybe. But we shot uh, three from this set that night, that first time. Uh, we should have had five pretty easily, and if some things would have went even better, we might have had as many as six or seven. Uh, so there's coyotes here, and it's, uh, it's just a rock pile in the middle of a field, and we have, but we have nice uh, trees pretty much on, on each side of us, including a pretty big coulee off to the uh, off to the southeast. And uh, here the wind is um, the wind is out of the northeast or east to northeast. And right now I'm looking northeast. By the way, this is um, this is about mid-November. So now I'm focusing more on uh, doing howls and some mating sounds, and that's what I started off with here. And I picked out this, I'm getting this reflection out there off of something. It's kind of hard to tell what it is. I think it's probably a deer uh, just to the low, lower and left of my green dot there. So I've been checking that out and I zoom in on it. Usually, if it's a coyote, it's not going to be standing still, at least not for very long. So you can kind of tell. And then suddenly I, I pick up this guy with my scanner off to the right. He's coming from about straight east. So wind is no problem here. And he's coming pretty good. This is to, um, I forget exactly, I did some um, some mating type stuff. First I started off a little a um, little more subtle with just some uh, some wines and then I kind of ratcheted it up a little bit with um, some more like mating fight type sequence. You can see he finally pops back out here and he's getting a little hesitant um, but it looks like when he takes off here again, he's gonna try to skirt me to the to the north. And I'm on the east side of this rock pile. There's only so far I can uh, pan to the left before he's gonna be behind the rock pile, and then it's that's over. He's he's gone. So he is coming in good, but he's not going to come straight in. Now, I will say that at this time, um, there's we got about two thirds of a moon, and not really hardly any clouds. There's a little bit of snow on the ground, so it's pretty bright out there. Um, certainly much brighter than I would like, but I think that might have played into um, you know why he didn't come straight in. Or a little bit straighter in. Here I'm gonna I am up here and I'm thinking about it but uh, I'd like to see if he come a little bit closer. I got some room yet to the left but now he's gonna keep heading straight that way. He's not coming any closer so I get him to stop. He's doing a little spinny dance here, and I'm thinking, oh, maybe I need to shoot him again. And then he does this flip, and he's done. Um, shooting the 22 Creedmoor, by the way, with the 75 grain Hornaday ELDM. So it's a match bullet, not necessarily designed for killing animals, but in my experience so far, it does really well. Okay, so this is just a little bit later in the set here, and I'm still calling, running the, the e-caller anyway, and we had this one come out of the woods, and he sits there, and he sits there, and he's um, he's actually listening to a couple of his buddies howl down in the coulee that's a little bit further off to the left, and um, finally, 
he he shakes loose and he starts commenting a little bit. Now the caller here is uh, even further to the left, so he we're looking southeast now, and the caller is uh, pretty much straight east. And so he's trying to swing around the south end of this rock pile. He's still quite a ways out. He's, I don't know, 200, 250 yards maybe. And he's he's working to the west on the south end of this rock pile. And I got two buddies with me, one on the very end of the, uh, on the south end and one a little bit further around the corner. But the wind is out of the east to northeast. So it's um, he's going to hit that pretty soon also this gap in the trees is where we walked through to get set up so I'm getting a little nervous about him gonna smell something and bug out so I'm getting on two-way radio telling my buddies it's you know what's up that we can't let him get too much further we're gonna have to try him um, right about here I can't swing any further I got my buddy on the end there I really don't want to point my rifle at him so that's all the further I'm gonna go I'm gonna swing it back to the left a little bit I'm just wait right about here I'm radioing uh, my buddy's like you're gonna have to take him and eventually I hear a shot and I'm just waiting oh here he comes again it didn't sound like a hit so I'm ready and I'm tracking him and I probably wouldn't normally shoot but because um, it's a pretty low percentage shot here I shoot once run the straight pull and right about there just rolled him that's 350 yards on a dead run and I absolutely dusted him now I could say that yeah it's no big deal I do that all the time but let's, let's be honest that was a total accident uh, but sometimes you know you gotta take that you know, as many coyotes as I've uh, tried to shoot on the run and missed horribly once in a while you, you feel like you deserve one of those so anyway we got that one down and I'm gonna keep calling some more okay so I'm still calling and at this point we got the two that were down in the coulee that were howling earlier they finally popped out and they stood there for a while and listened and then finally I switched to uh, a fawn distress like a deer fawn and uh, so in this area uh, not not so much this year but last year there was a ton of snow and I think these coyotes had a pretty easy time running down deer and so I think they're they're quite used to chewing on deer in this area so I switched to that and uh, the other one started coming. I keep checking back on the other one. He's just standing there. He's not coming, at least not yet. Uh, this guy, he's uh, he checked up a little bit here, but he's he's coming pretty good, just slow and steady. And um, again, the caller here is would be off to the left, uh, a ways, because uh, I have it a little bit upwind, and. Well, we're, we're looking here uh, kind of southeast, and the wind is out of the northeast. So he's circling a little bit, but he'd have to circle quite a ways past the south end of this rock pile to, to get our wind. So we're just fine there. Check back on the, the other one. No, he's still there. So back on this guy. And I've been in you know communication with, uh, with my buddies again with the two-way radios letting them know what's going on and uh, since this guy is circling to the south I want uh, well, my buddy on the south end of the, the rock pile to take him because up to this point I'd shot every coyote uh, that night and um, kinda wanna share the love a little bit but um, I'm definitely gonna be on this one and I'm gonna stay on him and if he gives any indication of bugging out it, it's on um, so I'm gonna let him come up here as as far as he wants to and let my buddy make the call on shooting him but I'm gonna be right behind him I've seen way too many times where we let one come in to uh, to let uh, someone else get the shot 
and the thing ends up getting away. So here I'm thinking about it pretty hard, but no, I think he's got further to come here. I'm still playing the uh, the fawn distress on the e-collar, and I'm turning it down a little bit as he's getting closer, turning the volume down. And he's thinking about it. He keeps looking off to the left, which should be his right. That's where the collar is. He might be looking behind to see if his buddy's coming too, although I don't know if he'd be able to see him all the way back at the, the tree line there. So I'm thinking about it pretty hard, but no, he's he's going to keep calling, or co keep coming, that is. And as long as they seem okay, um, you know, they're not getting weirded out, you just let them come. Right about here, he gets hammered. That's a double tap. I was just waiting for my buddy to shoot, and I had the my own trigger about half squeezed, and as soon as I heard his shot... I hit my trigger too and that thing got double tapped. So here I set my rifle, or locked the rifle in a tripod and I'm scanning around with my scanner to see what happened to the second one if he ever did end up coming. And I'm not seeing much, I don't, I don't see him running away, then you scan a little bit further to the left and holy crap there's one there. So I grab my rifle again and I'm looking around, oh there he is. I don't think this was the second one that was at the tree line. This one was a different one altogether. And he's still coming in. And this is, you know, literally seconds after one of his buddies just got shot, probably, I don't know, 100 some yards away. And he actually comes up right next to the first one that I shot. And I thought he was going to get weird there, but he didn't. Here I woofed at him. He stopped. I drilled him. And that makes four so the two I got laying out here are probably 160 180 yards something like that I don't actually have a rangefinder on either my scanner or the um, or my scope uh, the one that I hit on the run there that was 350 yards uh, my buddy's got binoculars with the, the range finder on it so that's how we figured that out it was it was a ways though on a dead run and then the one that we uh, that we double tapped there that one was I think about 120 yards but uh, yeah this uh, the old rock pile set has been good to us it's uh, seven coyotes down from the same spot over uh, two sets of course, the you know the first one was two months ago, but uh, a lot of coyotes in this area. Thanks for watching.